So today I will be showing how to conceal your TV cables in the wall. Last video, what we did was install a power bridge kit, but the downside of those bridge kits is you see the cable going from the lower part of the bridge kit into the outlet. Some people don't like that. They want a super clean look, no cables. So what I will say is this method is really good if you only have the TV power cable. If you have an HDMI cable going down below, running it to a gaming console, a TV box, something like that, so then you're going to have a cable coming out of the lower half of the wall. You know, if you're gonna have an HDMI cable, then you might as well have the the extension cable as well, right? And you're just plugging that in. So might as well just do the power bridge kit and you're gonna save yourself a lot of time and hassle. The downside of this method is you are going to have to turn off a breaker. You are going to have to do minor electrical work. So if that makes you nervous right there, then this method is not for you. It's all the power bridge kit where you don't have to do that. So let's get started. Our TV is already hung. We are gonna to have to take it off the wall. If it's not hung, then watch my TV installation video. You need to see where the TV is going because the outlet we're gonna build is going to have to live behind the TV, right? That's the whole point of this. We're gonna take the TV power cable and plug it into an outlet behind the TV. I should mention that this method is only really gonna work if you have an outlet down below. So we're gonna have to tap into a power source, right? So our outlet is actually here, not directly below. Most of the time the outlet's directly below makes it a lot easier. In our particular case, it's gonna be a little bit of a tougher install. So if you have an outlet a little bit to the left or right of the TV, well then uh, the bonus, because you'll see how that's done. One of our main goals is to minimize drywall damage, not take any baseboards off, anything like that. Okay, so we're gonna have to mark out where our TV is. I'm just gonna take a tape measure, and because our outlet's to the left of the TV here, I'm just gonna see from the wall, where the TV stops. So it's two feet from the wall. Anywhere from two feet to way over here, I can put the outlet. As we two feet from the wall and 47 from the floor. That's where the outlet's gonna go. So I'm gonna take the TV off. This one just has little pull strings. Unclip the TV. And I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay, with the TV off, you should see the bracket now. Here's that bridge kit that we installed in the last video. So the TV is um, 24 inches or two feet from this wall. I'm just gonna mark it 26 inches, a couple inches buffer, and 47 inches is the, where the bottom of the TV is. So I'm just gonna mark about 50 inches. Now I know where I can kind of build the outlet. Obviously I wanna build it as close to that outlet as possible because there's gonna be studs in the way. I know this wall has insulation. You know, if there's an outlet directly below the TV, you're gonna to wanna to build it straight up. So it's very easy to drop wire in the wall vertically. It's very difficult to run power cables horizontally because there's studs in the way. So let's talk about the tools we need here. We're going to need a electrical reno box. We're gonna install it somewhere there. We're gonna need a stud finder and use this Franklin sensors. Awesome stud finder. We're gonna need some house electrical wire, drywall knife, tape measure, some wire stripper, a uh, no contact voltage tester to make sure the power is off. And I like to use this little plug-in voltage tester. First step is to turn off this breaker. Like I said, I'm gonna use this plug-in voltage tester. I just plug it into the outlet and then flip the switch until it, it turns off. And so I know the power's off. When I get in there, I'm going to be using this no contact voltage tester to make sure that power is off. Here's our output. Here's our voltage detector. You see that this outlet is on right now with these two lights. We're gonna have to go to the breaker box to turn that one off. So we do not want to kill ourselves today. Okay, as we can see, the power is off. The fuse box I have in my home is not that well <laughs> labeled. So it did take a couple of guesses to find this particular outlet. Okay, so I'm gonna unplug this now and take off the faceplate. You should see outlet like this or something similar. And then I'm going to remove this outlet and pull it out. I'm actually going to use my drill for this. It's just a little bit faster.
We're gonna kind of yank this out a little bit. Uh, what I like to do is get my no contact voltage tester to just make sure that there's no power going to this outlet or any, any wires. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. And if there was power going into this block, this would light up. Okay, so I feel confident I can pull this out. So this is a pretty standard setup, the black wire, that's the hot wire. We have the white, the neutral, and we have the bare copper, which is the grounding wire. So the idea is just to run another cable that jumpers into this. So we just have to run the wire from this box to above. And if you recall, the TV started at 24, but we gave ourselves a little buffer room. So 26 is where we're gonna build the box. Like I said, it's very easy to go up to run the cable because that's just a cavity or insulation. But if there's studs in the way of our wire run, that's it's very difficult to get through. We're gonna get our stud finder to see where the studs in the wall are. So just run your stud finder where there's some lights. That's where there's a stud. So there's a stud here, which is too bad actually. There's usually a stud on the left or right side of these outlets. So in this case, there's a stud on the right side here, but we need to run our wire like this. So we're gonna have to go through this stud. So what I'm gonna do is get my drill in there to drill through the stud like this, and then run the wire diagonally up like that. Be very careful not to puncture any wires. If your outlet here is directly below the TV, it's much easier because these uh, plastic boxes, they have little slots up top that you can just break and then fish a wire through there. So it makes it much easier. I have to drill through the side here because there's a stud. I need to bring the wire over to the right. But like I said, if this is directly below the TV, much, much easier just to fish it straight up from this junction box um, to a hole we're going to cut out behind the TV. I'm going to do 11 sixteenths. That's pretty much the hole you need to fish the wire through. So we've drilled our hole in our outlet. Like I said, hopefully you don't need to do that. The only reason we're doing that is because the left side of the TV is more in from the wall than the outlet, if that makes sense, right? So if I ran an electrical cable straight up and I had to build the outlet here and the TV would start here, the TV would plug into there. That doesn't really hide any cables. We have to build the outlet here. Our outlet is to the left of that, but if you have an outlet down below, then it's much, much easier. You don't have to drill in the side. You just break one of the plastic tabs and run it straight up. Anyways, we drilled the hole in the side of the uh, junction box. Now I'm going to cut into the drywall somewhere here and install an outlet there and then run a cable from here to the outlet down below through the hole we just drilled. Here's that mark I made earlier. So again, the TV stops somewhere here and I gave myself a few inches buffer and the bottom of the TV is somewhere here and I gave myself a little bit of a buffer. So if I install this here, it should be in good shape. I like to flip these little reno boxes like so and trace them out. So that's where I'm pretty much gonna cut. This reno box has these little flaps that grabs the drywall. So I can't cut all the way where the flaps end or I won't have any drywall to catch. With my tracing, I just bring it in about a quarter of an inch or so. So I'm gonna cut this rectangle. Always I'm gonna get my stud finder, make sure that there's no studs here, no studs there. Next stud I see right there, that is the stud where the outlet is on. Right, the outlet's to the left of that. There's a stud we drilled through, and then that's where my outlet's gonna be. So with your drywall knife, drywall piece out, don't need that. You can see that our letter box fits nicely. Now we're gonna fish our fishing tape, which is a tool you need from our outlet up to this hole. And then we're going to fish in the house wiring, the 120 volt wiring. So this part I like to use fish tape. We're gonna fish through that small hole up 
to, or we just cut out. Okay, so I finally got this fish tape through. It took a little bit. I took some insulation out of this top hole to make it a little bit easier. And then I just fished the fish tape to the stud to the right of the stud here. And then I used that as kind of a guide up and then grabbed it from the right. With that complete, we're going to hook up some house wire to this to fish it down to this outlet. So what we're going to do is attach some of this house wire. It's 14 tube gauge. Uh, that's what we use here in Canada for 120 volt. Make sure to follow your local codes. So I'm going to attach this to the fish tape and then fish it through. And what I like to do this is strip some of this back and hook the bare copper onto this. So I use my wire strippers. Copper wire that I'm going to use to bend it onto the fish tape like so. And then I'm going to tape this, tape it with some electrical tape. Okay, so something like that. And now just feed her in, push this side in and pull the, uh, the fish tape out to so slowly feed it through. Okay, so here we can see that the wire has fished through. It's still attached to the fish tape, so I'm gonna remove that. We have our wire fished through, right? So now we just need to attach this black, white, and bare copper wire to our existing house wiring. And this will be a live line once we turn the circuit back on. So let's strip down these wires. I'm going to move a little bit more of this sheathing. So now we have a good amount of wire exposed and then I'm going to remove the sheathing of the individual conductors. Okay, so I have these three conductors now, this wire. So I'm gonna pull back the wire a little bit so the sheathing is just starting to poke out into the, the junction box. And then I'm gonna start by connecting the um, bare copper wire and then moving on to the white and then the black. So there's a nut with all these ground wires that I'm going to try to thread it into there. I'm going to install the neutral just in the back of the outlet and the hot. Okay, this uh, bottom outlet is finally done. I jumped the three conductors into the existing outlet. My particular situation was a little bit complicated. The junction box itself was not properly affixed to the stud. I don't think you'll have that problem. Anyway, so this one's done. Faceplate's back on. Uh, the wiring that is being jumpered up is connected to this one now. So let's move on to the top one. Like I said, this is the cable that jumpers into the bottom outlet. So we are going to finish this side off now. We're gonna trim it seven inches back. This does not have power to it yet. And then we are going to strip it about four or five inches back. Okay. Then we have this, our three conductors again. Now we're gonna get our little rework box. There's these little tabs here. We're gonna poke one of them out. Just use the flathead screwdriver to do this. Like so, a little bit more. Feed this cable into the slot we just opened up. Like so, we have some wire coming out of the box, good amount to work with. And then slowly this box slips in, grabs the drywall on the upper and lower flaps. And then we're just gonna loosely put it in like that. And then we're gonna tighten all the screws to clamp it into the drywall. Strip these wires back a touch. Outlet that we're going to install. Wire it up 
properly ground. And then I'm just using these push connectors. And that is ready to be installed. And you can see, you know, my drywall was a little bit brittle here. So it created a little bit bigger of a hole I would like. The faceplate doesn't quite cover it, so I can get a larger faceplate, but this is all gonna be covered with the TV, so I don't care. Stuff like that does happen. An outlet installed. So now I'm going to plug in my little voltage tester and turn the breaker back on and see what happens. All right, it works. Top one is good. These two lights mean it's working properly. And the bottom one is good as well. So there we have it. We have an outlet that's behind the TV now. Again, this was the bridge kit method, and now we have the more clean method because we're not gonna even have a cable going from that one to the outlet. Of course, this one's more difficult. So the final step is to put the TV back on, plug it in, and, and hopefully everything works. Okay, TV's back on. All we have to do is turn it on and make sure it works. And look at that. TV works. There are no cables going from down below to the outlet. There's no dangling cables. There's nothing. Uh, it's a very, very clean look. But like I said, it does take a little bit of, of electrical know-how and like everything, the right tools.